today's day one of my writing fortnight and every day in the morning I get up and I go for a bike ride around the island and then um, go home and do half an hour of yoga before starting writing. I think you need to do this to get into your body and just to like, especially if you're working from home or wherever it is you're staying, you need to sort of mark the beginning of like I'm home, done my exercise, I've got my blood pumping, I've woken up and then I'm going to have some breakfast, get a shower and then sit down to write. And I think it's really important. Um, I, I never do anything without getting my body first, doing something physical first. And yeah, every day I come here to enjoy the ever-changing view, this thing of getting far more from far less. Every day I do the same thing and yet every day is completely different. And today there's no sea. <laughs> it's just soupy. Oh, and it's so quiet. I love it. No see. Nothing to see here. This is so cool. So, yeah. I'm going to go home, do some yoga, have some breakfast, get a shower, and then start writing. So, I went out for a bike ride, and then I just did half an hour of yoga with Adrian. Um, which is, she's a YouTube uh, yoga person, she's brilliant, if you don't know her, I highly recommend her. And then I was just about to do this, I was just doing this automatically, and then I was like, oh, actually, this is part of the process. So I make a pot of, um, I bless it, sacred tea. Um, so it's just any old teapot, but not any old teapot, it's a special teapot. And my lovely friend, um, Shelley, her mum crocheted me this lovely um, teapot holder, warmer, which actually works, they're really good. Um, they do actually keep your tea warm. And it just means that I don't have to keep getting up and making tea throughout the day. It means I've got a lovely pot of tea. And I have done, my favourite combo is a puck of love tea, which is chamomile, lavender and rose. And then puck of nighttime tea, which is oat flower, lavender and lime flower. And these are just, they're calming and they taste amazing. And then I also put in three, and this is my favourite thing, sniffing oh, so good. rosebuds so these are rosebuds you can get them from neil's yard or star child i get mine from and they're um yeah beautiful it's like a lebanese i think lebanese tea but it's just beautiful rosebuds um and they smell divine and then i put three in the pot for the triple goddess the virgin mother and crone then i have a special spoon um, with all these things, it's about, so in Aboriginal culture, everything is sacred. So they don't just build a dam, they do it as a ritual act. And then once they've done it, they decorate it with art, with paintings that tell a story. And their storytelling passes on knowledge. So different tribes who have different languages can manage a forest fire. They could, before we completely destroyed them, um, they could manage a forest fire from one end of the country all the way through to the other because they needed to, you needed to do it. The crazy ones we have now is because the forests are not being managed properly. So they would um, purposefully create forest fires and manage them travelling across several, like, you know, 20, 30 different tribes with different languages. And they were doing that over thousands and thousands of years. And the reason why they were able to do it is through story. So there was the story of the North Wind or the South Wind and... And it had a characteristic and they were like, when when the serpent of the south rears its head, then you light the flame and then it chases coyote or whatever it was that was the story. I don't think you get coyotes in Australia. But like whatever the story was, it got passed down the generations so that they knew how to manage it. So whatever the story gets created about the reservoir that's been built, the dam that they've built, um, that story will then be passed on and it means the generations know how to use it and we in the west have been trying to work out how to um, stop people digging into nuclear waste dumps and they were like you know people were thinking of symbols and stuff and we know from Tutankhamun's tomb that if you say there's a curse or anything like that people are still going to dig into it thinking that there's treasure there so um, what they've realized the best way of doing it is storytelling so the people who live in the local area, their job is to keep telling the next generation that there is dangerous waste in this place and that it shouldn't and can never be touched um, and that it's not treasure and it's not special, it's not anything special, it is just dangerous. And they've done it through storytelling. And um, one, 
I feel that the more we've kind of decided that the inner and outer world are separate things and we've given all our attention to the outer world. Oh, let's get through space. Let's find out how big the universe is. Let's see how small things get. It's like everything's been outer. And actually, the inner universe is so much better. But we're like, oh, dream, children's imaginations, creativity, art, like whatever. No, the reason why this world's gone to shit is because we've left the inner world behind. And the inner world is where the actual gold is. And so make everything sacred. Make everything you do a sacred act. Make everything you do an act of worship. And so have a special spoon. Have a special teapot. Have your favourite tea. Have a thing that you open that makes you have a little orgasm every time you sniff it. Know what your favourite smells are. Know what your favourite textures are. All of these things. And fill your life with it. And that is how you live as an artist and be creative. You make your inner world outer and you make them one. Infinity, inner, outer, everything together, whoosh, circle, top of the tarot deck, full, zero, we're all one. The universe, the world, the bubble, the whole thing. So you take your spoon and you bless your tea. Make this up yourself, do whatever you want. What I do is I put it in and I go north, east, south, west, straight up for the masculine, and three times round for the feminine, for the goddess. And then the fool is just all over. Because he's a crazy, crazy dude. And then spirit. And then I hold it in the water and I set my intention for today. So my intention for today, I set it in yoga as well, is to surrender to the process. So in yoga, we're always told not to stretch or push or, you know, try and, you know, use tension. Don't ever use tension. Relax and ease into it. And I think sometimes the creative process is like, oh, I'm going to write 10,000 words or I've got to do blah, blah, blah. No, don't have to do that. Ease up, back off, surrender. Whatever will be, will be. I will write whatever I write. I might end up not writing. I might end up just walking all day in the countryside. Whatever happens is whatever I need at this moment in time. So, set the intention of surrender. And that is now a blessed and sacred pot of tea that I will drink throughout the day. I'll introduce you to some of my other rituals. So the other ritual that I do before I begin is this altar space, which I've created for Shona, my muse, in front of the TV in the living room. And my awesome writing desk is here that I love with a beautiful view of the garden. And then I just sit here and write. I love this writing desk. It turns out it belonged to a friend of mine, which is really cool. Got a heated blanket underneath this blanket. So I get in there, it's all cosy and warm and I'm going to sit and write. So it's a wonderful space. And then I have this here behind me. And I've got each of the four elements. Um, I've got salt for earth, water, which I collected from the spring in Glastonbury, which I took on my pilgrimage, the candle for fire and then the incense for air. And then in here, I will be burning um, frankincense, sandalwood and rose oil, which are the smells that are the favourite smells of Shona, my muse. And um, I saw that in a meditation, which I mentioned, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, either I'll share. If you go back through my videos, then you'll see that the meditation is in there. Um I haven't actually checked whether it is a meditation yet. I'm pretty sure it is. And if not, then I will do one as I promised. So you just get everything lit. And then, oh, yeah, so I'll burn the oils. And so the room will smell of frankincense and rose and um, sandalwood. And then to begin the day, I check in with the goddess. What I mean by the goddess is Earth, so Mother Earth. And as I mentioned before, Shona, Mother Earth, uh, all of it is a relationship with your inner world. So it's your twin. So I don't believe in these things in a kind of outer way. I have a relationship with Mother Earth that's very inner and personal, like people do with God. Or I mean, like, you know, everyone sees that in different ways. But like it's a relationship that you're having with your twin in your inner world. Um, and so when I'm checking in with Mother Earth, I don't think that Mother Earth is literally talking to me. 
Um, although I do think she talks to me. I think she talks to all of us and she's in the wind and she's in the trees and in the plants and she's telling us all the time to sort ourselves out or whatever it is that she's saying. And I really feel that when I trust the universe and surrender to the universe, that amazing stuff happens. Me living here is from surrendering to what happened. I literally can't recommend it enough. Surrendering to, instead of planning, instead of grasping and planning and wanting um, you don't always get what you want. Sometimes you get what you need and trust that the universe knows what it's doing and is leading you in the right direction. So as part of my practice, I will cut a card. And there you go. Exactly what I was just saying. Just be. So just be with whatever's happening today, whatever mood I'm in, however I feel. If I feel I need to spend the day meditating or going for a walk in nature to so just do it. Just be. Enjoy my process. Enjoy where I am. Enjoy the whole thing. If anything gets thrown at me that's unexpected, just be with it. It's okay. Don't fret. And so there you go. That's my altar for the day, all set up and um, means that I'll be surrounded by this smell. And I do think that the smell helps with um, concentrating you because you're like, oh yeah, okay, I'm in writing mode now. I can smell frankincense, rose and sandalwood. So it's time to start writing. So now I'm all cosied up at my writing desk. I've got my ergonomic arm thing. Make sure you look after yourself because if you're doing a lot of writing, you need to make sure you're sat properly. So I've got my um, cushions onto this arm and I'm comfy with my blanket. And um, yeah, I've got my ergonomic arm thing. Everything's set up nicely to make sure that you're looking after yourself. Very important. And then before I begin writing, I use this beautiful rose cream. So I, for me, rose is like everything. Everything. Rose is everything. Um, so this rose cream's from the Sensory Sisters, the herbalism women that are my guru teachers. Um, and it smells like that pot of rose buds I had earlier. So you take uh, a little of this, rub it on your heart space, and it just opens up your heart chakra. <clears throat> that's what we're asking you to do with your writings opening up your heart you're making your inner world outer you can rub a little bit in your hand yes. then i also have some flying ointment which has got mugwort in it um i've also put mugwort in my tea so i uh, made that pot of tea but then i've also got a little um thing that i know, fill with mugwort and put it in each of my teas so throughout the day I get increasingly trippy um it's completely legal it's a it's a, a herb plant that grows in the hedgerows all over the place so I place a little bit of this on my temples mugwort and then a little bit on my forehead here the flying ointment it's where witches flying on broomsticks comes from they didn't fly on broomsticks they rubbed hallucinogenic lube on broomsticks and then rubbed themselves on the broomsticks and it made them fly. And there's records of that all the way back to Egypt. It was like the only dildo shaped thing that was smooth that, um, that you know, wasn't going to splinter and hurt you. Hello. <laughs> oh, human. <laughs> And then, uh, this is a treat that was given to me by, I might not be able to open it now because my hands are too oily. No, it's a treat that was given to me by my friend Ellie. And it's this gorgeous oil mixture. Oh, it's so nice. Like a balm. And it's a really good lip balm and with uh, general loveliness. Mm. So Jeff, please yourself, pleasure all your senses, do all the things that make you feel happy and good and nice. And then I'm going to put on a playlist. I normally listen to the radio when I'm working. I listen to Radio 6. But with um, writing, I think that's too distracting. So um, uh, with people chatting and stuff, I mean, I love Sean Keaton. He's my, he's my guilty pleasure. No, secret love, whatever. Um, I have a playlist for writing, which is called... So if you ever want to use it, you're welcome to. It's on Spotify. Um, my account's called Career Arts. And it's called, I've got Aphrodite She Date, which is a bit more um, 
well, actually, I mean, that's the one I normally use for writing. And then I've also got Mama Nature and that's one that I use for ceremonies. But either of them are good. I think I'm going to go with Mama Nature. So this one's a cover and you might... And that's um, me all ready to go. So now I'm going to begin writing. And I feel ready and centred and treated and wooed. And my muse has been wooed. Uh, let's get writing. <laughs> 